Order. The final stage of the Budget Bill, and I call the Minister of Finance and Personnel. Order. Order. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that the Budget Bill Northern Ireland 2015 do now pass. Mr. Speaker, I've been encouraged to stop there. I think, <laughs> I think, on, I think, I think, on, I think from all sides of the House. Uh, Mr. Speaker, today's final budget stage budget bill debate draws to a close the financial legislative process for the 2014-2015 year. The bill before us has been the subject of much debate over recent weeks, a debate that has at times strayed much wider than the budget bill itself. Nevertheless, the debate has been informative, and I welcome the opportunity that members have had to have their say on this important piece of legislation. I hope it is now completely clear to everyone that this budget bill covers the 2014-15 financial year, but also provides legal authority for the departments to spend in the first few months of 2015-16. In addition, it gives legal authority to the Department of Justice to incur spend on a new judiciary pension scheme in 2015-2016. As this financial year draws to a close, now is an opportune time to reflect briefly on what was perhaps the most challenging financial environment facing the Executive and this Assembly since devolution was restored in 2007. During the year, we had to sanction in-year resource spending reductions to manage the overall block position. This requirement for departmental reductions was largely due to the delay in agreeing a way forward on welfare reform. It is therefore encouraging that the Executive has now reached agreement on this issue and that welfare reform legislation is now finally passing through the Assembly. Only last month, the Executive and this Assembly also agreed the budget for 2015-16. Again, this was achieved in the backdrop of a highly challenging public expenditure environment next year. We also agreed the Stormont House Agreement. This not only provided a significant financial package to fund public sector voluntary exit schemes and investment in shared education facilities, but also paved the way for the devolution of corporation tax. With our economic recovery still fragile, including in our private sector, it is more important than ever before that we focus our attention on putting in place the conditions that will allow our economy to flourish. I believe that the devolution of corporation tax is an important part of that economic strategy. However, make no mistake that it is not a silver bullet. We need to continue to invest in our uh, children and our young people in securing our skills pipeline, in making our firms more innovative, and in ensuring that we have first-class infrastructure. Only then can we take full advantage of the strategic advantage a lower rate of corporation tax affords Northern Ireland. Of course, Mr Deputy Speaker, innovation is not just something that should happen in the private sector. I am determined that the public sector becomes more innovative and that we find better and smarter ways to do things. This is not only desirable, it is an imperative in the context of an increasingly constrained public expenditure environment. I will continue to do all that I can to ensure that the people of Northern Ireland have access to the best public services delivered in the most effective and efficient manner possible. To conclude, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is the final stage in our financial legislative process in this year, and the legislation before the House has already been subject to much debate. However, I look forward to hearing any final thoughts from members on this important legislation. Mr Deputy Speaker, I beg to move.